I think right now is a really good time for this video because we see that the X-Files is having a reboot and right on time the CIA has decided to declassify a whole bunch of UFO documents from their investigations claiming the truth is out there on Twitter and then you have the X-Files official Twitter account thanking the CIA for their help because we all know if the truth is out there it's gonna be the CIA that we all get it from, right? So I think now's a good time for this. This guy right here, Michael Persinger, he's done a lot of work explaining paranormal events with geomagnetic events. So for example, this one's the weather matrix and human behavior. This one's transcendental meditation and cult mania. Let's see, this one is space-time transients and unusual events. He's got a two-part series here on the paranormal, and this is the kind of stuff that he writes. If, if with all caps and underlined, if paranormal experiences can be shown not to be largely a product of fraud, psychological disorder, social reinforcement, or known difficulties of brain chemistry, there's still no reason to assume that their sources are necessarily non-physical. So that's the kind of stuff he does. And this is a declassified CIA document that I got through FOIA request for some work he did for the CIA having to do with experimental dream telepathy clairvoyance and geomagnetic activity. See, there's his name. So now you kind of get an idea of what he's doing and who he's working for. And I know you guys remember that back in the 90s, the 80s and 90s especially, there was a huge boom in people claiming to be abducted by aliens. And it was all over the place. And then you had Lawrence Rockefeller meeting with the Clintons whenever Bill Clinton was president, trying to get them to declassify documents and tell people the truth, right? This is something I think we all need to consider. This is a New Scientist magazine from November 19th, 1994. And this woman, Susan Blackmore, went and visited Michael Persinger in his lab to discuss with him alien abduction, the sensation of alien abduction, and explanations for such. So it's a big long article. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, but there's a couple things I am going to read because I think you'll get the point. So starting out, she says, the outer door slammed shut and a deathly hush descended on the tiny soundproofed room. Half an hour in here, lying in the kind of dentist reclining chair might have seemed a restful prospect, except for the converted motorcycle helmet on my head. Embedded in either side of it, just above my ears, were sets of solenoids. Soon these would be delivering pulses of magnetic field designed to mimic the firing patterns of neurons in the temporal lobes of my brain. And then the rest of this article, a large portion of it, she's talking about all of the examples of alien abductions and what could be causing people to have those feelings and the arguments on both sides of whether or not it's real or fake. But you can pretty much skip all that and just get to this part where she talks about what happened in this chair in Persinger's lab. Even if sleep phenomena are part of the answer, that doesn't explain the sense of being taken away bodily or flying or floating and going on a journey. Enter Persinger and his idea that abduction-like experiences are caused by complex patterns of activity in the temporal lobes. In addition, magnetic effects from earthquakes could be strong enough to set off the necessary firing. To test this, he looked for and found a strong link between the dates of seismic events and claims of UFO sightings, abductions, and other strange phenomena from past centuries. Nor can hysteria and fear be the sole explanation, he argues. Reports of strange experiences peaked in the weeks and months before earthquakes, says Persinger, when magnetic changes might have been happening, but little else to suggest an imminent seismic event. Those who believe that abductions really happen have tried to counter this theory by showing that abductees do not score higher on measures of temporal lobe lability. But arguments have raged over whether enough people were tested and whether their experiences were really abductions. Now, in a bid to settle the issue, Persinger is turning to direct simulations. And this is where my experiences in the lab chamber came into the picture. I was wide awake throughout. Nothing seemed to happen for the first ten minutes or so. Instructed to describe aloud anything that happened, I felt under pressure to say something, anything. Then suddenly my doubts vanished. I'm swaying. It's like being on a hammock. Then it felt for all the world as though two hands had grabbed my shoulders and were bodily yanking me upright. I knew I was still lying in the reclining chair, but someone or something was pulling me up. 
Something seemed to get a hold of my leg and pull it, distort it, and drag it up the wall. It felt as though I had been stretched halfway up to the ceiling. Then came the emotions. Totally out of the blue, but intensely and vividly, I suddenly felt angry. Not just mildly cross, but that clear-minded anger out of which you act. But there was nothing and no one to act on. In perhaps ten seconds it was gone. Later it was replaced by an equally sudden attack of fear. I was terrified of nothing in particular. The long-term medical effects of applying strong magnetic fields to the brain are largely unknown, but I felt weak and disoriented for a couple hours after leaving the chamber. Of course, I knew that it was all caused by magnetic field changes, but what would people feel if such things happened spontaneously in the middle of the night? Okay, so they were able to put a helmet on this woman and mess with her temporal lobes, and she had sensations of being stretched up to the ceiling, yanked on, pulled upright, moved. She had her emotions messed with. She was. They were able to push buttons and make her angry. They were able to make her scared. I mean, this is what I'm saying. This is the kind of technology people like Persinger, people like Mr. Persinger here who has done studies for the CIA, this is the kind of technology they had over 20 years ago. They were able to make people feel like that, okay? So, it's when I talk about mind control, it's funny. I get so attacked on that issue, like I'm just a crazy tinfoil hatter conspiracy theorist. No, a conspiracy theory is when you have a theory that there's a conspiracy. I don't have a theory. I have literal facts. This is a fact that this technology existed back then. And check out how she ends this, okay? <laughs> One last thought. Persinger applied a silent and invisible force to my brain and created a specific experience for me. He claimed that he was imitating the basic sequences of the processes of memory and perception and that by varying those sequences, he could, he could control my experience. Could he have done it from a distance? Could it be done on a wider scale? Suddenly, prospects of magnetic mind control seem an awful lot worse than the idea of being abducted by imaginary aliens. And again... This was written 20 years ago. This is the kind of technology they were playing around with in labs 20 years ago. Could it be done on a wider scale? Could it be done from a distance? What is real? How do you define real? If you're talking about what you can feel, what you can smell, what you can taste and see, then real is simply electrical signals interpreted by your brain. Gee, I guess we really wouldn't know if it could, would we? It's not like they would just let everybody know, oh, by the way, we can make you feel and think anything we want to and make you think you're experiencing all kinds of things and feeling all kinds of things. They wouldn't tell people if they could do stuff like that. But the point is, this existed then. And it's funny because while they're doing all this experimentation with these things, in labs, and I'm sure Mr. Persinger was not the only person at this time that this was happening, all these people were coming forward saying they'd been abducted by aliens. Gee, what a strange coincidence that is. And on top of that, I just want to end up by saying all of these things have effects on people, and people just don't seem to realize it. it's not a conspiracy theory, okay? This is a book called Microwave Auditory Effects and Applications. And I just want to show you guys something because, you know, the conspiracy theorist that I am. This was back in the 70s, the kind of research the military was doing back then. I just want to read this to you really quick. Direct communication of speech via appropriate modulation of microwave energy has been demonstrated by Sharp and Grove. They tape recorded each of the single syllable words for digits between 1 and 10. The speech waveforms of each word were then converted to digital signals in such a fashion that each time an analog speech wave crossed the zero reference in the negative direction, a short pulse of microwave energy was emitted from a transmitter. By radiating themselves with speech-modulated microwave energy, Sharp and Grove reported they were able to hear, identify, and distinguish the words tested. Communication of more complex words and sentences was not attempted because the average power density required to transmit these messages would exceed the current 10 milliwatts per centimeter squared guide for safe exposure. Just keep in mind, this was the 70s that the military was researching, being able to bypass your ears with microwave speech-modulated microwave energy 
communicate directly into your brain with it. Okay? Again, not a conspiracy theory. This is simply a fact in a science book that you can go get from a library, all right? This stuff exists, okay? So, is the government covering something up? Absolutely. Are they covering up aliens? Are they covering up the fact that they have the ability to make you think you were abducted by them? That's the question, all right? Because we know what some of this stuff can do today. We know that they can use magnetic fields to physically stop a person from talking. We start at the back of the brain. We've, um, we've switched off my visual cortex, so it made me unable to see things. If we move a little bit forward in the brain, we've interfered with people's ability and my ability to see faces. Uh, a little bit further forward, we've uh, interfered with the ability to perform actions. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we've interfered with the ability to, uh, to speak. And the bridge is falling down. Uh -oh. Uh, you think of something you can do and we've basically interfered with it with with this machine we know they've even done studies now funded by the military where they can change your belief in god using energy waves directed at your brain okay that's what they can do today that we know about so what else is going on that we don't know about i think the truth really is out there i just think people don't actually want to hear it and once they do they don't want to believe it there's a reason for MK Ultra. There's a reason they were trying to unlock what they call the black box of the brain. Have they done it by now?